Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Now, it's the end of May 2025 and we're still seeing excess deaths in most Western countries, but not in Eastern countries. What could the difference possibly be? And I'm still getting huge amounts of comments and emails on people claiming that they're still suffering from adverse events of mRNA vaccines as well. But let me give you some evidence for the excess deaths first of all. Now, this is from the Our World in Data site. Now, here we see the United States. Now, this line here is 5%. So we see that 2021, after the vaccine rollout, the, the excess death was very high there, actually, wasn't it? But it's persisting. That's the 10% line there. And there's the 15% line. So we see excess deaths in the United States have been above the 10% mark for quite a long period of, of time. This is, this is an ongoing issue compared to 2015 to 2019 levels. So in the United States, it's clearly there. And what about other countries? Let's have a look at, um, this is the United Kingdom. Now here's the zero line here. And again, we can see that for a lot of the time, we're quite above the zero line. And for not much of the time, we're below the zero line. So Excess deaths here, typically around about the 10% mark in the United Kingdom. Now, it's important to remember, of course, as I've said many times, after the pandemic, when a lot of uh, vulnerable people died um, from various issues, uh, one of them, for example, was midazolam and morphine, but various people died, particularly older people died. So the people that might have gone on to die in the next few years, that died, kind of all died all of a sudden in 2020. So we should see a reduction in excess deaths, as we see in Eastern European and uh, other countries, Russia, for example, where they didn't have any uh, mRNA vaccine rollout, coincidentally. Um, anyway, let's uh, look at a few more examples. That is the United Kingdom. So again, not a good uh, position there in excess deaths. Very little talked about. And the Office for uh, National Health Improvements and Disparity used to publish a breakdown data on this. They've stopped. Data is no longer available. Hard to get data now on causes of death and age of death um, in the United Kingdom. Um, a pity they stopped doing that. No idea why they stopped doing that. Let me know what you think. Uh, this is Canada. Well, I mean, heck. But well, good to see that reduction in Canada there. Let's hope that's real uh, at the end of 2024. But, but basically, 2021, 2022, 2023... Canada excess deaths here between sort of, what, 10 and 20%. This is looks like a huge amount of excess deaths in addition to those lost during the, uh, as a result of the pandemic and the mismanagement and the malmanagement during the pandemic. Uh, this is uh, Australia. And again, 10% lines there. Excess deaths are persisting in Australia, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, where we have the latest data. Um, similar, very similar pattern. This is New Zealand. The data is a bit more uh, jaggedy there. The reason for that, of course, it's a smaller population, so uh, fluctuations in death aren't smoothed out as much. But the trend is definitely there, again. Um, Netherlands, again, typically... 10%, virtually never dropping below the zero mark, but where it should be below that all the time. Uh, typically around about the 10 to 20% mark in the in the Netherlands. Again, way higher than would be expected. Ireland, again, 10 to 20%. I mean, I think you're starting to see some consistency in these patterns now. We'll be talking about what this means in a little more detail in a minute. Um, this is Denmark, again, Typically around about the 10% mark. Very rarely that it's below the average excess deaths. Uh, Germany, again, pretty similar pattern. Uh, Israel, again, fairly similar pattern. This spike here in deaths, of course, was due to the, um, the terrorist atrocities that occurred. It's not a disease-related situation. Um, but excess deaths ongoing in Israel, bumbling along at round about the, again, typically that's 10%, that's 20% mark. Uh, South Korea, very highly vaccinated country. Excess deaths there, very often above 20%. Uh, Japan, very highly vaccinated country. Excess deaths here, 
always, always above what we would be expected. At the moment, we're about 27% above what would be expected. These are horrific figures which are simply not being talked about. Um, bizarre. Germany looked at France. Very similar pattern. That's the 10% line there in France. Um, Singapore, again, highly vaccinated country. Very high levels of uh, excess deaths consist, uh, p persisting. Taiwan, again, very high levels. Now, Russia, now, we're looking at a few examples now where it's lower. Russia, of course, um, below what will be expected. And this is exactly what we would expect as a result of the pandemic, where vulnerable people, for various reasons, are no longer with us. So Russia actually doing pretty well there, below average deaths, below average, after the end of uh, 2021, at least. So that's from uh, early 2022, below average different to the pattern here. Romania, again, very similar pattern, lower than expected. Uh, Armenia, lower than expected. Georgia, again, eastern, this is Georgia, the country in Eastern Europe, not Georgia, the state. Again, typical pattern, very low. Uh, Kajikistan, again, lower than would be expected. Whereas the United States, United Kingdom and all those other countries are higher than would be expected. So, for this not to be represented as a real problem is just perplexing. Now, we did look at this paper here about a year ago, I think it was. Excess mortality across countries in the Western world since COVID-19 pandemic. Our world in data estimates of January 2020 to January 2022. Now, I'm not going to do this paper in detail. We did it last year, but that's the paper. So 47 countries, there was over 3 million excess deaths. Uh, in 2021, excess deaths in uh, excess deaths were in 42 countries. 2022, excess deaths in 43 countries. A lot of excess deaths in that two-year period, well over 3 million. Conclusion from this paper, excess mortality has remained high in the Western world for three consecutive years. And now, sadly, we've seen for five consecutive years. Um, this raises serious concerns. Government leaders and policymakers need to thoroughly investigate, thoroughly investigate uh, underlying causes of persistent excess mortality. As far as I'm aware, in my country, this is not being done. It is perhaps starting to be done in the United States, which is good. Now, um, this is that data that we've just looked at here from our world in data. Um, so it's uh, 2015 to 2019 compared to 2020 to uh, 2024 is what we've just been looking at that shows all these great increases in, in deaths. Now, uh, to save all the dissenters uh, from my channel bothering, I always get these comments by the thousand. John, you don't seem to realise. John, you're a bit thick. You don't seem to realise that correlation does not indicate causality. Well, no, it doesn't indicate causality. Uh, I did teach this at university level for quite some time when I taught university uh, methods. But things that are correlated sometimes do have a causal relationship. Sometimes. Let's have a look at some examples. So, smoking is correlated with lung cancer. And of course, we now know that smoking causes lung cancer. Asbestos exposure is correlated with mesothelioma. And we know that asbestos exposure causes mes mesothelioma. Cancer of the pleural membrane. It's horrible, horrible cancer. These were first identified as correlations and people thought, ooh, just a minute, there's a correlation. We'd better look into it. Not, oh, don't you realise, you silly Billy, that correlation doesn't indicate causality. No, look into it. Don't arrogantly dismiss correlations. I'll give you some more reasons not to in a minute. Alcohol consumption is associated with uh, liver cirrhosis. And when you look at it, you find excess alcohol consumption indeed does cause liver cirrhosis. Obesity is correlated with high sugar intake, and high sugar intake does cause obesity. Radiation exposure is correlated with cancer, and radiation exposure does indeed cause cancer. Dioxins exposure is correlated with cancer, and dioxin exposure does indeed cause cancer. 
So correlation means we start need to start looking for causality. And I put together just a little bit of a, a bit of a summary of this, what we need to do, because we know how to assess whether correlations have a causal, if, if, if it's something that's causing the correlation. We need to, we do have ways of doing that. Causality, that's what I want to know. What is causing this? Causality may be adjudicated by larger scale associations. So do we have large scale associations? Consistent between countries. Have we noticed that it's consistent between countries in this video? Where other explanations are unlikely, is there going to be another explanation that affects all of these countries? Oh, and by the way, causes negative uh, excess deaths in Eastern European countries. Um, where other explanations are unlikely, where effect follows cause. So first came the effect, then came the cause. The harm is followed by the cause. Where greater exposure causes more harm. So more exposure, more harm. With a plausible biological mechanism. Certainly for vaccine injury from mRNA vaccines, we have plausible biological mechanisms. With coherence between bench science and epidemiological data. And again, we've got that. We've got coherence between bench science and epidemiological data. Supported even by limited experimentation. By analogy with other causes of harm and sometimes by reversibility. So there we go. Of course, you'll know from background knowledge that these are the Bradford Hill criteria. They're there, waiting. Bradford Hill wrote them up in 1965, Sir Austin Bradford Hill. Um, this paper recommended that our governments uh, look into it. Uh, in the United States, people are just starting to look into it now. Um, the United Kingdom, as far as I know, we haven't bothered. Um, maybe lives aren't important. Maybe we've got more important things to do. Disappointed by so many of the systems in the United Kingdom. The coroner system, the judicial system, the law and order system. I would have thought human life is pretty important, but hey, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it doesn't matter too much at all. The evidence that I see suggests that really it doesn't matter people never mind just a number now i'm going to stop there um now just before i go um there's lots of uh that the, if you see me on facebook with a dr john campbell uh it isn't me these are scams there's, there's a several of these scam accounts i have no dr john campbell facebook accounts <coughs> i do have a facebook account but i've stopped using it I basically stopped using it ago because of the censorship at the start of the pandemic. It was appalling. And um, I don't trust the about turn that's recently gone on in that organisation at the moment. I'm open to counter evidence, but at the moment, I don't trust it. So I don't, basically, I don't use it. So if you see this, it ain't me. Unsubscribe. Now, I've, this has been, these bogus accounts have been reported to Facebook, but they're still there. So that ain't me. Um, what uh, oh, that, that's the Our World in Data site where all these graphs came from. Do check it out for yourself. I'll put the link. Um, so the Facebook isn't me. This is the this is a site I do have though. Uh, this is a that was the power the uh, the video on the Shroud of Turin we did was remarkably popular. So I put the uh, the PowerPoint there so you can uh, download that PowerPoint if you want. So this is a legitimate this is my legitimate site for downloading. You can download all of the posters of protest um, that are there. And also you can download, so you can download all the posters in high resolution. You can print out your own copies, just the same as this one. You can put it in the loo, you can put it in your living room, you can do what you want with it. Uh, you could risk giving it to friends as a present, I suppose. Just print one out. Uh, <laughs> they're, free, they're completely free. And also um, you can download my textbooks there as well. And if you wanted to make a donation for the textbooks, we use these donations for projects around the world um so that is me any dr john campbell on facebook is not me 
And for now, thank you for watching.